Good morning. Good morning, owls. Where's the music? Actually, I have some sick beats playing. Here we go. There we go. Usually, I have some sick beats playing. All right. So today... Today, I'm going to be prepping for Shattered Obelisk. Now, I had to give some thought how I wanted to do this because I want to live stream prepping this so that I can make a guide for other people to run this. But the problem is I don't, I'm not great. I don't think I'm, I got to figure out how to present this, you know, how to present it in a way that would be helpful. How y'all doing? Wayne, Jeremiah, Benji, how y'all doing? I'm trying to figure out how to present this in a way that it would be helpful to DMs who want to run this. Did you shave? I did shave. I have a fat face. I hate the way you guys, you guys like, I have a fat face now. You know how when you shave, your face just looks poofy? Because you can see, because the beard, us big guys, all right, when you have a beard, it hides like every, every little, every chin, every extra chin you have, you know? So when you shave, you get a fat face. Or I, I have a fat face. Some... Some of us do. You, know, you can kind of got like an extra chin going on. It's not not pleasant. It doesn't look bad, it's just different again. Not bad, different, different. I don't like it. The reason I shave I don't normally shave because fat face. The irony. <laughs> the irony is that my thumbnail is always the, the irony is that my thumbnails, my YouTube thumbnails, always have the mo the least flattering face I could possibly make. It's, <laughs> it's funny. Um, the extra chin came out like, hey, remember those extra pounds you got to lose? Yeah, I've actually lost a good bit this year. But I still got a ways to go. All right, anyway, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Okay, so the goal, so the purpose of this stream is just going to be go prepping. And again, the prepping for the campaign, and I want to do it in a way where I can present my thoughts to other DMs who want to run this campaign. The problem that I'm running into is, I guess, getting started. Like, how do I, you know, how do I, I got to prep for prep, you know? wild it's funny to think about but i do feel like i can add some value I, I do feel like i have something to give to dms who want to run this i just got to figure out how to get that out you know so let's just get started let's just let's just go for it i am recording okay yeah i am recording so at this point, hey, so listen, if you're in my, the same way you did Icewind Dale, I like, yeah, Icewind Dale was great. I feel like I can do better. I don't know if I can do Icewind Dale, the way I did Icewind Dale again. I'm gonna be honest, the way I did Icewind Dale, I go back and I don't like it. Isn't that weird? Cause like so many people said they, they enjoyed those, those guides. I feel like I should just do it. I don't know. I'm more, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. As long as the value, like, I got to tell myself, as long as the value gets out. That's what's, that's the important part. So with that being said, let's, let's, okay. At this point, we are moving on to spoilers. So those of you that are in a shattered obelisk game, mine included, do it the same way you eat an elephant one bite at a time, baby. All right, so from this point, we're going to move on to spoilers. 
I am going to be giving a campaign summary. I'm going to go over the entire campaign for DMs. So if you're a player, last warning, if you're a player in a Shattered Obelisk game, I'm just going to spill the, I'm about to spill the beans right now. Everything about this campaign, I'm just going to lay it all out, start to finish. The big bad evil guy, everything that happens. And I'm just going to like, in a condensed format. So, if you're a player, if you plan on playing in a Shattered Obelisk game, before you run it, get out of here. No hard feelings. The purpose of this stream is just to kind of get my thoughts out there. I'm not, I just have an easier time talking to a live stream than I do recording. So that's the only reason I'm live streaming right now. Otherwise I wouldn't because I don't want, you know, I don't want players to see this. But I am going to make a video out of it. Okay, so with that being said, here we go, moving on. DMs. So I should probably, all right, so let me see here. I should probably like present this better. Hmm. All right, give me a moment, chat. I'm thinking. Those of you that are still in here. I want to, I'm thinking, how do I want to do this? If I, yeah, all right, let's just go for it. I'll, I, I'll come up with some kind of intro later. I'm trying to think of an intro, like, hey, DMs, here's the purpose of this, but whatever. I think I cut, we got it covered. We got it covered. So, last chance, spoilers incoming. This campaign is called The Shattered Obelisk. And the big bad evil guy for this campaign is a this this thing so it is a far realm godlet is what the book describes it as a godlet it's basically a piece of the mind flayer god il ilsensine which i can pull up some information about ilsensine Probably here we go. So this, so this, uh, there's, there's a, there's a mention of Ilsen scene in one of the, in one of the D and D Beyond books or one of the D and D books. It's not super informative. If you want, if you want up to date knowledge on Ilsen scene, you can go to Volos. Now Ilsen, Ilsen scene. I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I haven't heard it pronounced, so I don't know how you actually pronounce it. But the first thing that we that we need to know is about this mind flare, about gods, about mind flare gods. That's the first thing that we need to understand when we prep this, when we're prepping this campaign. First thing we need to understand is Il Sinsin. So Ilthids acknowledge the existence of divine entities, but it's unusual for any but a deviant mind flayer to actively worship such a power. So by the way, this is chapter one of Volos. It's under the mind flayer section. Now we have two divine entities associated with mind flayers, but they aren't deities, rather manifest manifestations of ideal psionic and philosophical mental states that mind flayers revere. Because remember, you, you never see a mind flayer cleric, right? You never see a mind flayer cleric. It's because they don't really worship. These are just, uh, so, you know, so kind of think about the difference between worshiping a God, like what, so a real world example would be say Christianity where you worship a God or any other, you know, faith where you worship a divine entity. Those religions are external. You worship an external force and, and follow their rules in order to reach heaven or whatever the equivalent is, depending on the faith. The other is internal, which is which would be like Buddhist, where everything everything comes from internal and enlightenment is like 
heaven. I'm not a theologist. I can't really get super into this. I just have a rough idea. But basically, mind flares are the the internal. So this is what ill, Ill sensing is. It it's a broader philosophical ideal um, than this other one, this other concept, leading many sages to assume it must be the more important or more powerful. So this is like the god of gods for mind flayers. But remember, it's a it's, a, it's more of an idea. Uh, Ellison scene represents not just mastery of one's own mind, but a psionic union between oneself and the realm of universal knowledge. Different elder brains have different interpretations of what this state consists of and how to achieve it. So remember, elder, bla elder, blains, elder brains are all about this. They want to achieve this, just like any other mind flare. Mind, they all want to be, they all want to, they're all seeking enlightenment. Think of it that way. This is mind flare enlightenment. I think that would be the best way to describe it. Elder brains and elders that devote themselves to ill sensing sometimes pursue ways. Somebody, somebody look up how to pronounce this. Elder brains and illithids that devote themselves to ill sensing, ill sensing, sometimes pursue ways to dominate gods of knowledge or even aspire to supplant those gods on the way to attaining this. So they'll actually look for gods to take over in pursuit of their enlightenment. So this is ill, ill sensing. And then when we come over here to Il Vash, which is the boss, the big bad evil of this, this is actually a piece of ill sensing. Let me find it. Not here. Maybe. Well, dang, I could have sworn it was here. Let me find where this critter is. So I don't have it on this one. Maybe it will be, maybe it's in the bestiary. I'm looking for the section. I'm looking for the section that describes, what is this? Get out of here. I'm looking for the section that describes where this creature came from. Because that part's going to be important. You want to know, like, I like to, I always like to start with the, the baddie in order to get an understanding. But, see, so this is what I get for not prepping, prepping for prepping. Now I can't find the section. Maybe it's in the welcome. All right, here we go. After opening a gateway to the far realm, the heroes follow the Mind Flayer fanatics. Um, Ilvash seek to harness power directly from this unholy creature who is a descendant of Ilsensine, a Mind Flayer god. So this is the, so Ilvash, the big bad evil guy, is a descendant of Ilsensine. There's also a section, there's also a part of the book that describes... that describes, like, it's a, like, ill-sensing left the, the far realm. It's not going to be in these chapters. It might, it might be, like, it's not going to be in these chapters. We'll go over this in, in just a moment. All right, here. Ill-sensing, nope. Well, this is not working out. All right, Ilvash details. Duoro relays that Ilvash was formed from the cerebral matter, matter the, was formed from cerebral matter, the mind flayer god Ilsensine left behind upon leaving the far realm. So there you go. Have any other details of that? Ilvash was formed from the remains of the mind flayer god Ilsensine when Ilsensine left the far realm to establish a divine domain elsewhere. Pieces of the god brain sloughed, sloughed away 
and awoke to sentience. This is Ilvash. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of right now, I'm just kind of consolidating all of the information we have about the big bad. Several years ago, Gold Coos inadvertently peered into the briny pool, the grotesque fluid that birthed the briny pool, the grotesque fluid that birthed Ilvash from Il Sensine's discarded cerebral fluid. So yeah, so we have like a lot of different things telling us that Il Sensine left the far realm and then left a piece of themselves behind, which grew into our big bad evil guy, Ilvash. Now, I will probably end up changing this section or this part, but not right now. We don't need to worry about that right now. We're just doing a we're just doing an overview. But I want to say something. I want to clear something up real quick. So here's our big bad evil guy. I want to clear something up real quick. Whenever you're running a Cthulian level creature, whenever you're running an existential threat like a Call of Cthulhu, which is what this, you know, that's clearly what this creature is, you know, inspired by. Whenever you're running this kind of creature or this kind of uh, campaign, you need to remember that the entire purpose of this, of the, of the, of Cthulhu is that there's nothing you can do, that it's an inevitable thing that's coming and you can't do anything about it. That's that's kind of the that's that's why it's called existential ex, existential horror is because we know is it's because like the existence of these things is the problem and there's nothing you can do about their existence just the fact that they're there. The reason I bring this up is becomes it is because it comes into conflict with how you run a D&D game. This thing exists. It's in the far realm. The party goes to the far realm. This thing even has, look, it even has a stat block. This thing has hit points. This is not, this doesn't make sense as far as the style. This thing should not have a stat block. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be stat. It shouldn't have stats. It shouldn't have numbers. You can't reduce it to zero. That's, that's not, that kind of goes against the idea. Now you can run it that way. There's a big monster somewhere out in the world and you got to go deal with it, right? Like, you know, fight a dragon. Like, we got to go kill this thing. But I will probably approach this from the existential horror type where there's cultists and they have stab locks and you got to kill them in order to delay the inevitable. One day Cthulhu will wake up and destroy the world or plunge the world into darkness for a thousand years. One day that's going to happen there's nothing you can do about it. You can't reduce Cthulhu to zero hit points. You can't get rid of him. He's not going anywhere. That's just a thing that's going to happen. There may be cultists who are trying to wake Cthulhu up, and we can stop them. We can delay, but that's the best we can hope for. The best we can hope for is to just delay Cthulhu waking up. That's, in my opinion, that's the style of the existential horror that's what these far realm, that's what mind flayers are, that, or not, not, maybe not mind flayers, but, you know, far realm deities. That's the purpose. So that's how I'm probably going to approach this. Is the party's not going to fight this thing. They're just delaying its awakening. I will probably end up making this thing Ilsen scene herself or itself. I don't know. I don't know pronouns. I will probably end up making the big bad evil guy Ilsen scene. And they're stopping Ilsen Scene's awakening. Or in the case of Mind Flayers, I think it'd be a good opportunity to kind of explore how Mind Flayers seek enlightenment. So maybe I'll go over that in the campaign. But as far as fighting Cthulhu, I don't, I don't like that. So I'll probably scrap that. Yeah. So that's where we are. Give me a moment to think. Give me a moment to think about what to what to go over next. Uh, monk player, you're all going about this the wrong way. Just like me, for real. Most horrifying dream that I had was I did kill Cthulhu, but then I was trapped in Rylia, where I had taken his place. Sounds terrifying. Ralia, California. 
I am digging some of this artwork. This is what happens when you stop. <laughs> when you stop Cthulhu. When you kill him. Okay. So the next thing I want to go over is how, what threat does this thing pose? What does this have to do with Phandalin? Right? So the title of this adventure is The Shattered Obelisk. It's right here on the cover. This is a piece of the shattered obelisk that the goblins are carrying away. The purpose, or this, or this creature's goal, the cultist, I should say. You know what? I think I'll go over the cultist next. Let's go over the cultist. So there are three cultists. Here they are. And in my opinion, these would be the fanatics. They're called the fanatics in the book. There are three Mind Flayer fanatics. Let me see if I can get a description of them. Like they have their own artwork. I'll, I'll pull the artwork aside and then I'll go to their description. Because I believe their description is in chapter seven. Here we go. The fanatics. Uh, the three fanatics. Actually, let me find. You know what? This might be better. How do I describe this? Uh, technically, whenever you play Cthulhu games, everyone should have Boston accents because most of the Eldritch stuff like Cthulhu happens near or around Massachusetts. I actually didn't know that. The artwork does kind of match, doesn't it? All right. Where do I go from here? This is tricky. Below the town of Phandalin. Below the town of Phandalin. There is a Mind Flayer colony. Right below the town. Let me find a good picture of the town. It's here. Over here like here's the map. Here's Phandalin right here on the map. Can you guys see that? Yep. So that's Phandalin. That was like some really good artwork of Phandalin. Do not have it. All right, we'll use this. So below the town of Phandalin, there is a Mind Flayer colony. And within this Mind Flayer colony, there are three Mind Flayer fanatics who worship Ilvash. And their goal is to bring Ilvash into this world. So by the book, they're trying to use the Shattered Obelisk. Man, I am really... This is why you pre-prep. Ilvash is the big bad. Beneath the town of Phandalin, there is a Mind Flayer colony. And, there, and in that Mind Flayer colony, there are three fanatics... Chishi, Chishinix, Hashutu, and Voalsh. Got to change those names to something a little more, <laughs> a little more manageable. But we have these three fanatics, and what they're doing is they're going out trying to collect pieces of a Netherese obelisk. We have some good artwork for the obelisk itself, the completed obelisk, this thing. So they're trying to go out. And they're trying to find pieces of this Netherese obelisk, put it together, and then bring their far realm god into the world in order to turn people into mind flayers and just convert the world to mind flayerism. So this is the obelisk. There's also some more good artwork at the very end of the ob of the completed obelisk. It's got a more like shattered vibe to it, so it makes a little more sense. Because they are putting pieces, so this this obelisk here. This is what they're trying to accomplish. The cultists, the three the three fanatics are trying to put together this obelisk in order to bring about the reign of the mind flayers with the power of their god Ilvash. All right, we're good. So the entire campaign is looking for these 
shattered op these pieces of the shattered obelisk and putting them together. So let me go over the campaign overview. I am going to edit this. <laughs> I'm going to edit this so that the the thoughts are a little more co cohesive. Those of you that are watching the mind the the mind stream, those of you that are watching the live stream get to see my thoughts unfold in real time in the mess but um, I'm going to edit it so it makes a little more sense. So in the summary, we have a summary of each chapter. The first five, or excuse me, the first four chapters are just Lost Minds of Fandelver. If you've ever heard of the adventure, The Lost Minds of Fandelver, that's all this is. This first, These first four chapters, very, very little difference here. It is almost word for word, Lost Minds of Fandelver. Almost word for word. They add a little bit about psionic goblins, a little bit, but for the most part, I read through the, I read through this. I read the book cover to cover. Chapter one through four is just Lost Minds of Fendover. It doesn't really deal with the overall plot of the campaign. This is actually separate. And it even tells you this is split, this adventure is split into two halves. Chapter one through four, reimagine the beloved adventure Lost Minds of Fandelver, originally published in 2014. The heroes begin chapter one in chapter four at fifth level. And then we move on to the obelisk, chapter five through eight. Now, I'm going to be prepping. I'm going to go over prep for all of all eight chapters, including the I'm going to go over the Lost Minds of Fandelver. But I want you to know. That as far as summary, as far as far as our entire campaign summary goes, Lost Minds of Fandelver is has no like these two sections are totally independent of each other. And when I prep each chapter or each 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 session, I'm going to include things from the future chapters to kind of hint at what's coming because there's not enough of that in my opinion. So just remember that the first four chapters, as a matter of fact, if you if you want to manage your own campaign prep, if you want to kind of take it easy on yourself, you can just read the first four chapters and get ready for that and just ignore chapter five, six, seven, eight until later, just to kind of manage your own time better if, if that's gonna be an issue. I. I'm not, obviously I'm not going to go that route. I read the whole thing. I like being able to pull from the future stuff, like hint at what's coming in the earlier chapters, just kind of create an overall narrative. So it doesn't feel so um, disparate, I guess. Uh, yeah. So we have Lost Minds of Fendover. Chapter one, two, three, four. And then chapter five, when they get back to Fandolin, the goblins have ransacked the village looking for these stones to build the obelisk. I believe there were three stones total in Fandolin. Maybe four? Doesn't say. But anyways, the three fanatics send goblins into Fandolin to completely tear the place apart, pull stones, and then leave. Fandolin has five, has three, let me go to chapter five just to make sure here. I'm gonna go over to chapter five. I wanna know how many stones are in Fandolin at the moment. Goblins. Let's see. Maybe four? One at the well, one at the miner's exchange, one at the shrine of luck, and one at the sleeping giant. So there's four stones here. So the goblins went to Fandolin, stole the stones, pieces of the obelisk, and then left and brought them to their fanatics. Again, the fanatics are trying to rebuild the entire obelisk so that they can bring their far realm deity into the world. Shrine of Luck. So that's where four stones are. That's chapter five. Chapter five is goblins break into Fandolin, 
and steal the stone and steal the Fandolin stones. Chapter six is three dungeon crawls, three dungeons. Each of those at the end of each of those dungeons is a stone. So that brings our total to seven stones, four in Fandolin, three in the dungeons. And here's one of the dungeons. This is Talhundreth, which leads to the crypt of Talhund. There's one at the end of Talhund. So I said three dungeons, but it's kind of two because this dungeon stretches into the next. So when they do, so they'll do Talhundreth. They'll get a stone around here somewhere, I think here. And then they're going to go down to the next dungeon, the crypt, and then they'll get the stone from here. No, they'll get the stone from here. There's some stuff going on. The stone's here. And then finally, they're going to go to Gibbet, Gibbet Crossing, which is another dungeon in the Underdark. And they're going to get the stone from here. So that's where the three stones are. So there's seven total. Again, four in Phandalin, three across dungeons at the end of each dungeon. And that's and that's what they need. Once they have all seven, once they have all the stones, we move on to the Illithid Colony, which is going to be a dungeon of its own. This is beneath Phandalin. So you're going to go from Phandalin to the Tunnels of the Deep, and then you're going to make your way to the Mind Flayer Colony. And there's going to be some encounters along the way. The name of the Mind Flayer Colony is Illithinok. And then once you get to Illithinok, this is a Mind Flayer Colony. There's going to be some portals to the Far Realm. You got to like, you get, basically when you get to the Mind Flayer Colony, you're going to be putting together one big portal to get to the Far Realm. That's Chapter 7. And then Chapter 8, you're in the Far Realm. And you're going to go face the god so that i think that's a i think that's a good enough summary i think that kind of fills in does anybody have any questions did i explain that well enough so recap chapters one two three and four are just lost minds of fandelver just a simple adventure and then when you get to chapter five goblins are going to come to fandolin they're going to steal four stones from up from fandolin and then the party has to go chase those goblins down while also going to chapter six where they do three dungeons. Each of those have a stone. And then chapter seven, they face the mind flare colony, which creates a portal, which when they do creates a portal to chapter eight, the far realm itself. And that's when they're going to face the fanatics and the big bad evil guy. These are the fanatics. Here's this one, which carries a a skull replica of himself. This is this is his own face. There's this one who has eyes for fingers, and then this one who can fly. Kind of looks. This one literally looks like Cthulhu. It's pretty cool. These are the three fanatics. These, in my opinion, are the big bad evil guys. Are we making a character? No, we're not making a character. I mean, you can if you want to. But I'm just kind of going over campaign prep. All right. Man, I really wish I had. I think that's a good, I think that's a good summary. How's everybody doing? Wizards of the Coast are pulling a Disney and retexturing old content. I'm not thrilled. I th I was really hoping that they would at least like remake it, but it's just it feels like it's it's just copied and pasted. There's like some minor changes, but they're so minor that it's like as far I'm talking about the first four chapters. The first four chapters again are just Lost Minds of Fendover. And they didn't change much about it. They're even using, like, they're even using some of the, re so, uh, they're even using the same maps. So let me go to Cragmaw Castle. This is the same map from Lost Minds of Fendelver. The, where's the hideout? Red Brand hideout, same map. Exact same map. 
I've run I've run this adventure so many times. I like I, I know this adventure like like the back of my hand. I have a pretty good understanding of this adventure, which is going to be fortunate because I'll be able to prep a lot easier. Is there anything I'm missing? Like I, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. So just a real quick recap. The big bad evil guy is some far realm deity. There's three Mind Flayer fanatics who are a part of a Mind Flayer colony directly beneath Phandalin. They're trying to collect seven stones from the general area in order to rebuild a Netherese obelisk in order to bring their Far Realm deity into the world, turn everyone into Mind Flayers, and just take over the Sword Coast. The seven stones, four of them are in Phandalin. In chapter five, goblins are going to break into Phandalin and steal those four stones. The other three stones are at the end of dungeons, which are in chapter six. The party's going to go through each dungeon. At the end, they're going to find a stone. And then finally, in chapter seven, they're going to go into the Illithid colony itself, which is going to, and they're going to create a portal to the far realm where they face the far realm deity. I think we're good. I think we. I think we summarized that well enough. Now, what do I do with this? Starting a new job next week? Congrats, bro. What, you, what are you going to be doing? What do I want to go over from here? I guess I can do a doc. I guess I can create a doc. I did I did create this doc and I was going to like fill in notes. I guess we can do that. So just to, just to kind of make... Oh, I didn't mean... Where did I just click? I just... I just messed everything up. How do I make it come back? Oh, no. What did I do? Oh, okay. Whew. Have you selected party members yet so we know if we should listen in or not? I have selected party members. I made a I made the announcement yesterday. Is it too much to ask to just turn off the announcements channel? It's not like I overuse it. Or to turn on notifications for the announcement. I get muting the entire thing, but my goodness. Could at least unmute the the announcements channel so chapter one i'm just gonna go i'm just gonna kind of just throw my thoughts down on paper we'll call it paper so chapter one is gonna be it's called a dangerous journey so we've got the goblin ambush and we've got Kragma hideout and then the road to Fandalum. So that's going to be chapter one. Pretty pretty simple chapter. Chapter two. I guess I got to maximize this. Or I can just copy and paste. Because I don't know how to make those appear for myself. Chapter two is going to be just Fandalum. We'll call it the town of Fandolin. I don't believe we're going to deal with the red brands. Okay, no, we do. We got red brand hideout. Yeah, so town of Fandolin, red brand hideout. Pretty good. Pretty good breakdown of chapter two. Chapter three. We've got a bunch of side quests. Chapter three is just a bunch of side quests. We've got Conaberry and Agatha's. Agatha's Lair. I love that encounter. There's some new artwork for it. Old Owlwell. Thunder Tree, which is going to be... that's So Thunder Tree is going to be an entire session of its own 
for sure. That is a very long side quest. Wyvern Tours, a bunch of orcs, and then Cragmaw Castle. Also, Cragmaw Castle is going to be a session of its own. So I'm going to guess Chapter 3 is going to be three sessions. Agatha's Lair, Wyvern Tour, Old Owlwell is a session. Thunder Tree is a session of its own. And then Cragmaw Castle will be a session. So maybe one session for Chapter 1. Can you guys see this? It's a little bit off it. So maybe one session for chapter one, one session for chapter. I'm going to actually make a note of this. One session. Chapter two will probably be a one session. Town of Phandalin and then the hideout. Actually, I'm going to say chapter two will be two sessions because I feel like that hideout is going to take a while. Like you could spend... A lot of time in Phandalin. All right, here's what I'm going to do. One session in Phandalin, one session in the hideout. I think that's good. So two sessions for that one. I like that. And then chapter three is going to be three sessions. I'm kind of noticing a pattern here. One for one, two for two, and three for three. Three sessions. So it's going to be Owlwell, Agatha's, and Wyvern Tour is going to be a session. Thunder Tree is definitely a session of its own, and Cragmill Castle is definitely a session of its own. So that's chapter three. And then finally, chapter four. Let me get my, my good stuff here. Chapter four. This is just like an, an overview doc. This isn't, this isn't, I haven't gotten to the session prep yet. I'm just, this is just an over, overview doc. I was busy yesterday, didn't have a chance to just, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Did you tell, Nathan, did you tell me what you're doing for a living? Chapter four is just two sessions. Is it going to be two sessions long? Probably. Let's see here. Wave Echo Cave. So Wave Echo Cave is one big dungeon. Wave Echo Cave. It's one big dungeon, but it's definitely a two-session dungeon. It's massive. Two sessions. One session, two sessions. Chapter 5. I keep doing this. Dead gummit. Chapter 5. Matter of fact, I'm actually going to just fill this out. Chapter 5, 6, 7, and Go ahead and get those down there so I don't have to worry about it. All right, chapter five. Now, I haven't run this one yet. The other ones I've run, but I'm going to guess this is one session. So we're going to do an investigation of the town to see what was stolen. We're going to have a couple of encounters, but I think... Oh, wait, I forgot all about this place. This is going to be a session of its own. All right, chapter five, we're going to call chapter five two sessions. So chapter five, we're going to have the Fandolin, we're going to call it the Fandolin investigation, investigation. And then we're going to have Zorzula's rest two sessions. Now, I, did, I didn't cover this, this dungeon in the summary. And to be honest, I can't remember why we come here can't remember why the party goes here there's something so here's the end maybe we come here for maybe we go here for information or maybe there's a stone here well either way we're gonna have to come here you know what? I think I think we come I think I think we do this dungeon. I think the purpose of this dungeon is to find out where the other three stones is. I think the party does this dungeon. I'm I'm sorry it's not fresh fresh on my mind. I can't remember why we do this dungeon. We'll we'll find out. As far as like campaign overview, it's not super important. Just know that they're going to go here and I believe the purpose of this dungeon is to gain information, but it's not super important for the broad. We're just doing a broad overview of the campaign. 
I'm pretty sure we come here. There's a pyramid. The boss is in this pyramid. It's a goblin. I think you just get the information. I think the purpose of this dungeon is for the information. So once you finish it, you find out where the three stones are, and then the party decides which which stone, what order they want to get the stones. So we're going to call that one session. So one session for in the investigation and one for this dungeon, two sessions total. Moving on to chapter six. Chapter six is going to be many, many sessions. It's going to be at least one session per dungeon. And I think I'm comfortable with that. Actually, let's do this. Chapter six is going to be one session per dungeon. Let me get my dungeon names. We've got Talhundareth. We've got the Crypt of Talhund. And we've got Gibbet Crossing. Now, each of these, I think, each of these is going to be a session of their own. I also want to spend an entire session on side quests. So chapter, chapter six is going to be four sessions. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way, the way this is set up by the book in chapter six, you're going to do a bunch of side quests for Fandolin. And then you're going to go do a bunch of dungeons. I don't like that because these dungeons are very long and you're going to spend a lot of time in them. So these are all the side quests, by the way. So they're called missions, Fandolin missions. Before they leave, that is to leave to go to the three dungeons, the characters have more opportunities to help the people of Fandolin as well as gain a base of operations, learn more about the threats, etc. We have this adventure, Pips, we have Pip's adventure, we have the odd cow. We have the missing miners. I like all these. These were pretty good. I'm going to incorporate, I'm going to hint at these in the future. I'm going to, I'm going to introduce Pip early in the campaign. I'll go over that in the session prep. I'm going to introduce this cow early in the campaign. I'm going to make you fall in love with them before I start, you know, threatening them. So these are just side quests. We're going to spend, so for as far as the camp is my campaign overview prep goes, what are we going to call these? Fandolin, we'll call them Fandolin missions. Fandolin missions. So I want to spend one session just doing Fandolin missions. One session in Gob Gibbet Crossing, Crypto Talhoun. These might take longer, but we'll call it four, se four sessions for chapter six. I think I'm comfortable with that. Chapter seven might be two. Could just be one. It really depends on how much time we spend in the Underdark versus how much time we spend in the Mind Flayer Colony. I don't want to, I honestly don't want to spend a lot of time journeying to the colony. I'm going to put a tentative. What do I call this? Journey. Journey through the deep, and then Illithanok, two sessions. I really don't want to spend more than two sessions in Chapter 7. Devoting an entire session just to journey through the Underdark, I'm not, I don't know how I feel about that. What I might do is travel through, and then the party finds a shortcut to Fandolin. That way they can pop out. Maybe. Maybe I'll do that. We're going to call chapter seven, two sessions. And then finally, chapter eight. Chapter eight is also going to be two sessions. There's going to be the briny maze, which is just this brain maze. Pretty cool. The whole map is a brain. And even the sections of the, the brain are like left temporal lobe. Um, yeah, it's funny. So the entire map is just a brain. I like this map. This is the this is the final dungeon. And then you find this pool, this briny pool, which you swim down to the bottom of, and then you reach the la the the boss's kind of area. I don't think I honestly this could be one session.
Maybe two? I... I don't know if I want to make this two sessions. Hey, 16 months. Hope you're doing good, Samus. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I hope you guys can hear me all right. I didn't even really do an audio check. All right. Let's see how we're looking. Let's let's get this. So chapter one is going to be one session. We've got two for two, three for three. That's six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen sessions. So eighteen weeks. That's long. That's lengthy. That's five months. Almost. Yeah, probably five months. So if you're running this campaign, Shattered Obelisk, expect five months. If you do one session in chapter one, two and two, three and three, two and four, two and five, four and six, two and seven, two and eight, you can expect a just over four months. Just over four months, almost five. And so the reason I'm saying five is because maybe we'll miss a session. Maybe there'll be a holiday or some people can't make it. Which, you know, we can we can kind of budget two weeks in there. That's fine. Again, this and also this is one session a week, and these are like four hour sessions. Three three to four hour sessions. So expect this campaign to run for five months. I I don't expect chapter six to be shorter. Like, honestly, these two dungeons, the like these dungeons are huge. I honestly think these dungeons are going to be a session each. You might be able to get, the, like, if you, I run a pretty fast pace campaign. I don't like, a lot of my games, you don't, we don't really linger. Like the ball's moving. That's not, I mean... I don't, so let me put it, let me word it this way. I don't put a lot of filler content. We just kind of, we just do, you know, we do the, we do the thing. And I expect this to be four to five months. Wait, you might be able to, you might be able to get it to four. If you do Wave Echo Cave in one session and you do chapter six in three, You're, you'll you'll be cutting content to get in any <laughs> you'll you'll you're gonna have to cut content if you want to make it go any faster than that. So yeah, four to five. Anticipate four to five. I'm gonna make an announcement to my players right now. Uh, like this is pretty much what what I wanted the stream to be. Just just kind of going over the adventure. Tomorrow I'll probably do another one or Monday. I think Monday I'll do another session. I'll do a I'll do an actual session prep. So we're done. That's all I wanted to do today. I just wanted to kind of go over the campaign, get it get it all down on paper, kind of put my thoughts out there and process everything that I just read. I just I did just read the book cover to cover. Obviously, not everything in the book stuck the first time. So I'm going to be going over. I just wanted to I just wanted an overview. I wanted to do exactly what I just presented here in this this stream. Just kind of go over everything, get it down. Now that I have it, now that I've seen the overview, I have an idea of how I'm going to prep for it. I'm good to go. What the thing that sucks, I'm going to save this. The thing that sucks about this is that we're getting Planescape soon, and Planescape is going to have its own adventure. And I'm not even going to be done with Lost Minds event with the first half of the book by then. And this one has its own adventure, and I want to do it. So yeah, well, I'm, thankfully I'm only running two. So yeah, I might have to, I might have time to squeeze in Planescape. I might, but yeah. Is this new one an extension of the original or anything related besides the town? It is an extension. 
So listen, Shelly, this book, the first half, the first four chapters is Lost Minds of Fandelver, word for word. Not word for word. It's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's basically Lost Minds of Fandelver with some new artwork. They are using the same maps, like Red Brand Hideout. It's the same, same map. Um, but we do have some new artwork. Like, here's Agatha. I love they gave us some Agatha artwork. Love it. Um, we didn't get any artwork for the Ogre. Oh, this is, you know what? This is a unique map for, Al, for old Owl. This is different than the old one. This is the exact same map of Thunder Tree. Yeah, pretty sure this is the same map of Thunder Tree. But we got, you know, Ride Off has some artwork. That's great. Venom Fang sitting on their tower is pretty cool. Here's the Ash Zombies. We've got some artwork for that. Pretty great. This is different. Wyvern Tour looks different. I'm probably going to use the old the old map that I was using. It's Cragmaw Castle. This map looks very much the same. Uh, okay. That is my campaign prep. I'll make a video out of this. I think I'm good. I think we're good. The next, the next session, my session prep, my chapter one session prep is going to be Monday. Maybe tomorrow if I feel like doing some session prep. I think tomorrow, I think, I think tomorrow, the rest of today and tomorrow, I'm just going to make some notes, just some, just some little, some small notes, any ideas that I have pop up in my head. And then Monday, I'm going to do an actual session prep for chapter one. Get that out of the way and we can move on. But yeah, I think we're good. Much love, everybody. Thank you for hanging out. I just want to get, you know, just get this out there. I recorded it because I want to make a video out of it, which I'll be doing, you know, eventually. I'm going to, I'm not going to release this video until after my first session. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. But for now, I'm out of here. Thank you all for hanging out. You guys have a wonderful weekend. I'll be in the Discord at me if you need me. If you have any questions about the campaign, I'd be happy to answer them. Just to get like just to get the thoughts rolling. You'd be doing me a favor. If you got some questions about the campaign, you plan on running it, let me know. All right. I'm out of here. Peace.